Hi everybody, Levi Clay here, and in today's Guitar Pro 8 tutorial video, we are going to be looking at how you can use Guitar Pro 8 as a practice tool with transcriptions that you own. So, if you want to check out Guitar Pro 8, there is a link in the description, and I would recommend that you use that affiliate link before the upgrade date runs out. You can grab yourself a deal, it's a great piece of software, you are going to have some fun with it. So, let's take a look at the lesson. So what I have here for you is a transcription that I've just done for a client, and I think that's the first thing that's probably worth pointing out. You can't just load an audio file into Guitar Pro and it create a transcription for you. You need a transcription. But of course, all the products that I'm creating for various websites that I work with, I'm now starting to integrate Guitar Pro 8 features like this audio import. And of course, my individual private clients that have me transcribe solos, for example, this solo, I'm starting to work with audio in them so you can really use them as nice practice tools. But I think that this is going to be something that guys are going to start using more and more often in the products that they release. So you can really get a of detail in your practice and your study so in this particular example we have a solo by Roy Ziv it's a really nice solo I've imported the audio I've done the transcription and everything and I want to show you how we could go about using this as a practice tool so the first thing that we need to understand is workspace is important currently this is a bit chaotic so up here in the top left we have access to our three panels uh, this would be the this panel on the right the panel on the bottom and actually the audio file and that panel on the left Depending on how you're looking to work with this, I would recommend probably getting rid of all of those. You don't need them on screen taking up space, right? We also want to go up into the view button and probably deselect show audio file so we can just work with the transcription. Of course, you can then use zoom functionality uh, on my PC. I'm using control and the roller wheel on my mouse to get in where I want. There's one other thing that's probably worth considering though, if you're looking to really kind of um, practice the way you wanna practice. If we go over here into the inspector window, which you can bring up with F5 and go over and click on track, up in musical notation here, you will see buttons for tab, notation and rhythm slashes. Now, some people do like to work with these buttons and, and use these buttons. Um, most of the time I tend to submit my transcriptions to people with the notation on, uh, on like this so you can understand things rhythmically. But by clicking on, uh, or sorry, deselecting standard notation, we can just have tab. And if you are the sort of person that likes to work with just tab, that's a nice tool to have at your disposal. And if you are a maniac who doesn't like tab at all, you can deselect the tab and just work with notation. It's entirely possible. So make sure that you have your transcription set up in a way that's uh, most visually appealing to you. You can, of course, jump into the design mode up here, which is done using Control Alt and D. Um, and you could adjust the levels of, you know, the amount of bars on each line and how those bars are split up. That one's totally down to you. Obviously, if it's a transcription that I've done for something, I will have done all of that and, and made it look the way I think that it looks best beforehand. But if you do want to tweak it in any way, shape or form, that is an option. So um, I'm actually just going to bring up the mixer just for a second. So what we have here, as I say, is the audio file uh, synchronized with the Guitar Pro. Um, audio. If I um, just go down here and solo the audio, so we just hear the audio recording. And now I could jump over and just solo the Guitar Pro audio. On their own, they don't really mean much. We can play them both together, that's totally acceptable too. And you can also use this button down here, which is the master focus uh, knob. We can use that to select the level of focus that the current track has. So as it stands, we currently have the overdriven guitar selected. I can adjust this knob to uh, allow you to hear how present that particular part is going to be in relation to the backing track or in relation to all the other tracks. So when I press play and I push this up, it's gonna start to make the guitar profile louder. And vice versa, we could go out and we could uh, bring it down in order to make the Guitar Pro file very quiet. So nice options there. 
the way I'm tending to recommend students do this now is actually to just mute the Guitar Pro audio altogether, which we can do again by going down into tracks and clicking on the mute button. Because realistically, if you have the audio embedded in your guitar profile, there's no reason that you should realistically need to hear the MIDI other than to check the accuracy of the transcription. And of course, if it's one of my transcriptions, it's going to be pretty accurate. So now we have... Um, our guitar profile muted, we just have the audio playing along to the uh, the tab and the scroll bar of the tab. So no matter where I click, it's gonna give us exactly the part that we want. You get exactly the part that you want um, and we're in control of that. The next thing for us to consider uh, to use as a practice tool is the looping functionality. So up here we can click on the loop button and now we can go to any point in the transcription that we wanna work on. Let's say we wanna work on this particular lick here. I can click and highlight the entire lick. And now when I press play on this, shock horror, it's going to loop and it will just be that bar looping. So this is a nice practice tool, check it. Now that might not be all that useful to you because it's coming in out of nowhere, right? So if we jump up here, we can actually click on the uh, activate and deactivate the count in button. Now when we do that, it's gonna give us a f uh, you know, four beat count in. Two, three. Now you can jump up in here and there's you know all manner of um, uh, metronome tweaks that you can make if you wanted a longer count and you can absolutely do that you can put on the count in so it appears between the loops you know worth playing around with that and getting um getting that in uh in your in your vocabulary <laughs> and you can also actually the visual metronome i've not used this myself yet but when you watch this you're going to see a, a visual light happening up here so we can see the metronome <laughs> which is kind of a nice touch um in that particular instance i didn't have it on for the whole thing so we could have a click for the whole play along That's a new feature in Guitar Pro 8, and if you want to use that, by all means, go ahead. It's there. It's cool. Uh, while we're at the this top section up here, worth considering, aside from the loop, there's also speed functionality. So I this is relative speed, and as it's currently engaged, the transcription is playing at 100% speed. But we can click on this drop down here, and we can actually select any speed that we want. So I could pl have that transcription play at 80% of the speed. which obviously is gonna be a really nice way for you to practice the very specific section that you wanna work on. And you can bring that right down to, you know, less 50%. Does the job. You can go down to 25, but here's the real magic. Uh, the thing that I would recommend for people is going down here into custom values. Now under custom values, we've got the relative speed, which is the thing we're currently playing with, a fixed BPM, but the real magic here is the progressive speed or the speed trainer, as I've always called it. So if we come on, click on progressive speed, we can control the speed that the transcription's relative speed begins at. So maybe 70% speed and how fast we want it to go to. So let's say we want to practice this until we can play it at 110% of its normal speed. A bit fiddly there. 110% of its normal speed. And we want it to increase... Uh, in increments of 10% every time it repeats. Now, if in your own practice time, I of course would recommend that you have that uh, increment be a little bit larger uh, over a, a, sorry, a longer amount of repeats because you'll be able to really ingrain things in there. So um, that will sound like this. there and if you are going to be working with that sometimes depending on the student it's it's kind of nice to go for the uh the the, the count in on there and to include the between loops count in because that way when it does increase in speed 
you won't just be jumped uh, thrown in at that new tempo you'll have a tempo marker or sorry a metronome click so you know what that new tempo is rather than you just having to assume what that uh, increase in speed is going to feel like but of course not necessary so yeah wonderful practice tool guitar pro um, something that you can absolutely use to really take your practice and playing to the next level and you can work on melodies you can work on tread things all I would recommend is making sure that you are heading over and making sure that the content creators that you enjoy are starting to create content for you using Guitar Pro because it gives you better options in your practice and it means that they can bring you better, uh, cooler products. And of course, I'm going to be at the helm of the, a lot of them. So um, yeah, very much appreciate uh, Finally, I just want to say a huge thank you to my wonderful supporters over on Patreon. If you want to be like these awesome people, get access to my weekly guided practice routines. You can get access to my weekly guided ear training sessions because of course how do you learn to transcribe well you practice and you train those ears and that is a great way to support the channel and get all of that stuff every single week um, hours of content going up for you guys you can also download hundreds of transcriptions and be a member of all of my online social groups which is a great way to engage with me and this wonderful community of people if that doesn't suit you can also head on over to amazon link in the description and check out one of my many books that are available thank you so much for checking this video out guys if you do have any questions about that please do let me know in that comment section below go and do some practice because you all need it much love laters